Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about tips to get rid of bloating because it seems like everyone and their mothers are bloated right now. And there's a lot of content on the internet right now normalizing bloating where people will show like their stomach when they first wake up and then their bloated stomach and they're like, bloating is normal. And while I fully support encouraging people to love their bodies and appreciate their bodies no matter what their bodies look like, I don't think normalizing bloating is particularly helpful or productive for us because bloating is not normal. It's very common. It is something that happens to a lot of people, but it is abnormal for our bodies. Pretty much any uncomfortable symptom is a sign that your body is telling you that something is wrong. Like I could go on this rant for PMS also, like so many people are normalizing PMS and feeling like really horrible and being in pain and having crazy mood swings before your period. And like, yes, that's common. But again, that's also not normal. It is a sign that something is off. Bloating is a red flag and I don't think it's helpful for anyone to try to pretend that it's not. You should never shame yourself for being bloated, but pretending that it's not a red flag for your health when it is, it's just really unproductive and unhelpful because while it's nothing to be ashamed of, if you care about your health, it's something you should be doing something about if it's happening regularly. Cause it's not just an isolated symptom where it's like, oh, that's unfortunate. Like my stomach looks a little bit bigger. Like, no, it is an indicator of something underlying that could cause any number of other issues that are gonna have more impactful negative effects. Conditions that cause bloating can lead to poor nutrient absorption, which is gonna not be good for you long term. It can impact or be caused by hormone imbalances, nutrient imbalances, electrolyte imbalances. Oftentimes it's caused by an imbalance in your gut microbiome and when you have that, your gut affects your entire body and so that's going to affect your skin health, your heart health, your immune health, your brain health, etc. So I want to make a quick video about more long-term fixes for bloating because a lot of the content out there right now, especially if you just google like how to decrease bloating, is much more about reacting to the bloating so something that's going to fix it short term but it's not going to stop future bloating from happening so instead of thinking okay what are remedies i can apply once i'm already bloated the thought process should be i'm getting bloated regularly how can i stop getting bloated in the first place so those are the tips that i'm going to cover today but one quick note that I want to make just about bloating and like physical appearance is that if your stomach looks bigger after you eat, it might not be because you're bloated. It might just be because you have more in it than you did before you ate. Like if you eat a softball size worth of food, it's going to be taking up this much space in your stomach. Like where else is it going to go other than to distend your stomach? I think social media has just given us the impression that there's people that walk around with like perfectly flat stomachs all day, regardless of how much they've eaten or what they've eaten. And that's just like not true. Your first thing in the morning stomach is not going to look the same as your immediately post meal stomach, no matter how healthy your gut microbiome is. Like you're going to look like you just ate because you just ate and that's normal. So if you are excited for these tips to learn how to stop bloating once and for all, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button for future videos. And without further ado, let's just dive right in. The very first thing that I recommend doing if you are experiencing chronic bloating is an elimination diet. An elimination diet essentially removes a group of foods from your diet that may be at play with your issues and then it slowly reintroduces them once symptoms subside to see which foods are giving you issues. So an elimination diet is gonna help you in two ways. First is helping you just identify the trigger foods if there are specific foods that are triggering your bloating. And then the second is giving your body and your gut space from those foods to heal. Some food intolerances, some foods that cause bloating, you're never going to be able to fix those, but a lot of them can be fixable or reversible or at least lessened when you give your body space to heal. Like as a quick example, dairy and gluten are probably the two most common things that cause people to bloat. And if every time right now you eat dairy or gluten, it causes extreme bloating, there's a chance that if you remove those things from your diet and anything else that might be messing with your gut health and your health overall, give your body space to heal, that you might be able to tolerate small amounts of those in the future. So the two elimination diets that I recommend considering starting with, this is going to 
depend a little bit more on your symptoms. So I would recommend maybe speaking to a nutritionist or just a professional to talk through your actual symptoms and see what might be the best fit for you. But the two like biggest general recommendations that I have to look into are number one, a low FODMAP diet and number two, a paleo diet. FODMAPs are essentially short chain carbs that are resistant to digestion and they appear in like a lot of different foods. Just Google low FODMAP food list. But essentially because they're more difficult to digest when they're going through your gut, your bacteria will start eating them and breaking them down and producing more gas than they normally would with other kinds of foods that are more easy to digest. And then ingesting high FODMAP foods also can draw more fluid into your intestines, so that's just gonna contribute to the bloat. And then I also like to recommend paleo as an elimination diet because it's a very good general elimination diet where it gets rid of a lot of foods that a lot of people are commonly very intolerant to. And then within the scope of eliminating things from your diet, I also recommend cutting out alcohol and processed foods, especially in combination with your elimination diet, but also kind of as a whole if you have digestion digestive issues. Alcohol irritates the gastrointestinal tract, it's inflammatory, so it's really not going to help if you already have underlying issues, and it also dehydrates the body, and when your body starts to get dehydrated, key organ systems will start to retain more water to help your body hold on to water because it's not trying to get way too dehydrated, and so that in itself can lead to more bloating. And then processed foods just tend to have a lot of additives, fillers, etc. that the gut microbiome does not love and can alter the balance of the gut microbiome, making you more prone to digestive issues and bloating. So getting rid of as much like artificial added stuff as possible could really help your gut. Second thing to do is to keep a food log and you can do this in combination with an elimination diet, highly recommend. Or if an elimination diet is too much for you, if maybe you know you come from a background of restrictive eating and you don't have a great relationship with food and you can't imagine cutting out certain foods unless absolutely necessary, then starting with a food log might be a great place. And what you're essentially gonna do is just every day, write down what you eat and when, and then you're just going to keep track of your digestion digestive symptoms and look for patterns and correlations. I also recommend writing down your fiber consumption for the day because that in itself regardless of the type of food may affect your digestive system. Also keeping track of the frequency of your meals could make a big difference. So different people are gonna thrive on slightly different meal patterns, right? Like some people might feel their best and have optimal digestion if they have like two bigger meals during the day, whereas someone else might feel the best and have better digestion if they have like six smaller meals throughout the day. So keep track of the frequency and kind of pattern of your eating as well and see if that comes into play. And then the last other thing to add on there to track is if you have a regular menstrual cycle or even an irregular one if you are a menstruating individual keep track of that as well because that could if there's any correlation with your menstrual cycle that could indicate a hormone imbalance as well and then you're really going to want to lean into working on your hormones in conjunction with your gut Tip number three is regular exercise and walking after meals. Studies consistently show that regular movement supports gastric emptying and motility, essentially getting things to get through your body and out of your body. When things are not flowing properly through your body, that can contribute a lot to bloating. So the more you can do to support digestive regularity, the better. And then regular exercise as a whole is really good at improving blood circulation, which is really important in digestive health. When you eat a meal, there is increased blood flow to your digestive tract to help you digest the food. And so if that is not functioning optimally, then your digestion is not gonna be optimal and that can lead to bloating. Regular exercise also helps with water retention, which in turn is going to just help with more optimal digestion digestion, again, with gut motility and keeping things flowing and also keeping gas from building up in your intestines. Basically, the more fit and healthy your body is, the better your digestion is going to be. So regular exercise can help a lot with bloating. Next is taking a probiotic. Excess bad bacteria or just an imbalance in bacteria in your gut is just gonna lead to more gas production from the bacteria that are living in your gut. And one of the best ways to support modifying your gut microbiome or the composition of that bacteria in your gut is through taking a probiotic. Now, not not all probiotics are created equal. You want to make sure you're getting a good quality one that actually has like the science to back it up and isn't just some like 
pixie dusted little probiotic that has like two bacteria in it that literally isn't gonna do anything for you. And you also wanna make sure that like the strains are well researched and put together in a, a good way, etc. So I recommend going with like good quality brands and not just picking up like the first probiotic you see. You can always give that a try, but like if you're really looking for good change in your gut and like substantial change in your gut, then I recommend investing in like a, a good probiotic. This video is not sponsored by any of these brands. They're all just amazing and deserve to be shouted out in this part of the video because that's what it's for. Recommendations. First recommendation is Seed Symbiotic. I've been taking theirs for years now essentially and it is one that I notice a particularly big difference while taking and just the science behind the strains that they use and how they put everything together is super solid and I trust them like as a whole as a brand so much. I'll leave links to all these down in the description box below. I think I have discount codes for all of them and I don't think any of them are affiliate links so I'm really not making money off of this but I'm saving you guys money. So Seed has been my go-to probiotic for a very long time but it is good to occasionally rotate through different probiotics because then you'll get different strains of bacteria and that can support the most diverse gut microbiome possible. And so if I'm taking a break from seed, I will take the Symbiotica probiotic, which is also really good quality. You guys know I love Symbiotica as a brand, as a whole, like again, all of the science and research that they put into the products, amazing. And my mom actually was having some gut issues and I gave her the Symbiotica probiotic and she said it helped tremendously. My next recommendation, I just checked and I think it's either out of stock or literally doesn't exist anymore. Um, I'm gonna give you the recommendation anyway, in case they have it again, um, but Natural Stacks had, or maybe will have, um, a really good brain-focused probiotic. So it's less focused on fixing bloating specifically, not that any of these are like specifically focused on fixing bloating, but it incorporates more strains that are good for brain health, which I think is awesome. And so I like to throw that in there when I am cycling off of the seed, but again, I don't know if they have that. I do recommend the brand as a whole, so hopefully they come back out with their brain biotic. And then the last recommendation I have is using Viome to get a custom probiotic. This is the most expensive option, so I'm putting it last, but it could absolutely be worth it to get something custom, especially if you're trying a bunch of different probiotics and nothing really seems to be working. You might also not need a probiotic. Like a probiotic is not a cure-all for your gut, but the more you can customize your supplements, the better, and Viome does a really good job of that. They send you an at-home test kit and they test your poop, your saliva and your blood, and they use all of that to determine your, I mean, they probably just use the stool to, <laughs> to determine your gut health, but they use all the information from that to build you a custom probiotic based on the bacteria strains that are going to most benefit your current microbiome profile. So again, links down in the doobly-doo. Next tip, next thing you can do is sleep more, sleep better, all the sleep, get sleep, go to sleep. If you're watching this at 3 a.m., go to bed. Studies show that poor sleeping habits are correlated with gut issues and this is no surprise. A healthy sleep cycle is going to optimize your production of melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. And it doesn't just make you sleep, it also helps optimize the microbiome in your gut. Basically, optimal melatonin improves the prevalence of good bacteria and it also regulates motility. So again, keeping things flowing. Lack of sleep can also increase stress, which in itself has impacts on the gut. And that brings me straight into tip number six, which is manage your stress levels. Chronic stress, also associated with poor gut health. Basically, if you are experiencing stress, whether it be emotional stress, financial stress, environmental stress, any kind of stress, your body doesn't know the difference between that stress and the stress of a bear chasing you. And being able to digest your food is really unimportant if you need to run away from a bear. So when you're stressed, your digestive system essentially kind of shuts down, which is why you might feel like you need to poop your pants when you're super stressed. Blood is shuttled away from your digestive system to go to areas of your body that are gonna be more important when you are evading stress. And this lack of enough blood flow to your gut can impact motility and it can lead to an increased development of bad bacteria in your gut. And then high levels of stress and the cortisol that is produced from stress can also increase the risk of intestinal hyperpermeability. So essentially, leaky gut and honestly that's going to impact a lot more than just bloating like if you have leaky gut that's going to have major downstream effects on like the rest of your body i'll save that for a whole other video and tip number seven is to focus on hormone balance your hormone balance and your gut health are so 
closely linked that it's really if one is off the other one's gonna be off and if you can fix one you're gonna improve the other microbes in the gut interact with estrogen androgens like testosterone insulin and pretty much all of your other hormones for example estrogen helps regulate the gut through a variety of mechanisms one is that estrogen essentially kind of feeds the microbiome and so if you have a balanced level of estrogen your microbiome is going to be getting the right amount of estrogen to support diversity and proliferation of of good gut bacteria. Your thyroid hormone also regulates digestion in a variety of ways. It influences your production of stomach acid, of digestive enzymes, and a variety of other digestive factors that can impact how well your body is digesting food and thus impact how much you are going to bloat. Testosterone levels can impact the inflammation in your gut, and if your gut is more inflamed, then that's gonna be bad news bears for bloating. I have several videos on balancing hormones. If you want more information on that, you can just search hormones on my channel and you will find all of them. But honestly, I feel like I should have put this tip a lot higher. I mean, all of these tips are equally, equally important, but this is a big one that I think a lot of people miss is they're so focused on their gut health and they also have hormone imbalance symptoms and they're not thinking of the two as a, as one issue. When in reality, there's probably like one underlying cause that is causing your hormone issues and your gut issues and your bloating. And like I said before, this is even more important to look at if you do a food journal and keep track of your menstrual cycle and your symptoms. And if you notice any sort of correlation there, then that's an even stronger indication that focusing on hormone health and hormone balance is going to also improve your gut health and your bloating. And then my last tip is to seek out actual answers. Like if you've done all of these things, if your lifestyle is on point, if you're getting enough sleep, you're managing your stress, you've done elimination diets, like you've eliminated all the things that should be causing you issues and you're still having issues, then I strongly recommend getting some testing done. Like the best way to proceed with any health issue is to have as much data as you can on what's causing it to get to the underlying root cause so that you can treat it from there. One of the best like comprehensive gut health tests out there is the GI map test. You may need like someone to actually prescribe it. I don't know if you can order it by yourself, but I had it done when I was working with Well Theory and highly recommend working with them if you need a low cost practitioner to help you get to the root cause of like digestive issues and bloating and stuff. They're amazing. I'll leave a link to them down in the description box too. But when I was working with them on my skin issues, I did a whole GI map test and it showed me every little thing that was even slightly wrong with my gut. Unfortunately for me, my gut was pretty darn healthy. And so that indicated that my skin issues are not related to my gut health. So that didn't give me any specific answers. But if you are having specific gut issues, it should give you specific answers. And then the other test that I already mentioned is Viome. That can be a good place to start as well for getting kind of more basic answers on your gut health. And honestly, I think the sooner you can get answers, the better. The only reason I have this as the last tip is that it is like a more expensive way to go about it. But the way I I see it, you can either pay money up front to get testing done and get answers, or you can spend more than that over time trying a bunch of different supplements, a bunch of different protocols without actually knowing if it's going to work. And you're kind of just constantly spinning your wheels, trying to figure things out, spending money trying to figure things out. Whereas if you had the answers ahead of time, you might be able to figure out an exact protocol that's going to fix it for you. And then I think it's also important to look into testing because there are certain gut issues that really can't be fixed without following a specific protocol. And you probably wouldn't do that unless you knew you had the issue like SIBO. If you have SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, there is a protocol that you're probably gonna wanna follow to help heal that and get your body back on track and get your gut microbiome back in balance. And that's not really a protocol that you wanna do without a diagnosis and without the help of a professional. And that's it, those are Marissa's top eight long-term bloating reduction tips. So many blog posts and videos out there are like, have ginger and mint, chew your food slower. And like, yeah, for some people chewing your food slower is all you need to do to stop the bloating. But if you've been dealing with chronic bloating, you've probably tried most of those tips already. And to be fair, if chewing your food slower is the issue and like not swallowing air, then that is the root cause and fixing that will fix it, which is fantastic. But if that is not the root cause, then you really want to do the deeper work to fix the root cause rather than just like 
getting bloated all the time and drinking peppermint tea afterwards to try to get some relief because that constant bloating, that constant inflammation in your gut can just cause so many other health issues or contribute to them. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any other great tips for like long-term chronic bloating and healing from that. If there's anything in particular that worked for you, if you were dealing with these issues and you fixed them, also let us know. Like, would love to have as much info as possible. We can all learn from each other. In the meantime, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs Thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, your neighbors. If you want to see more content from me all about health and fitness, you can check it out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video, and I will see you very soon.